today, battles begin quietly through small changes that occur right under our eyes. They deprive us of our will and chance to strike back before we even notice the aggression. On the other hand, the battlefield has expanded into new domains that cannot be seen with the naked eye. They include space, cyberspace, and the electromagnetic spectrum. To deal with the dramatically changing security environment and threats in expanding domain, the ground self-defense force will evolve into new dimensions. All in order to contribute to peace and stability in Japan and throughout the world. Today, gray zone situations that are neither peacetime nor armed contingencies are persisting for long periods of time, harboring the risk of rapidly developing into graver situations. There has been a tendency to engage in hybrid warfare that blurs the boundary between military and non-military realms. This requires the prioritizing of intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance ISR activities and bolstering of deterrence on a steady state basis. Furthermore, the coordinated fusion of capabilities in all domains, including the conventional physical domains of land, sea and air, as well as the new domains of space, cyberspace and the electromagnetic spectrum will create synergy and amplify the overall strength. That is what constitutes the multi-domain defense force. The multi-domain defense force will be established to ensure the true practicality of defense capabilities in facing this unprecedented security environment. Japan consists of around 6,800 islands. To defend our national territory, surrounded by extensive oceans in all directions, it is extremely important for us to defend our islands. The JGSDF is strengthening its defense capability in the southwestern region by placing units on the islands of Yonaguni, Amami, and Miyako. Should there be any signs of islands being invaded by nearby countries, Japan will respond through cross-domain operations that cover all domains within the country. The JGSDF will quickly dispatch rapid deployment divisions, establishing defense posture for remote islands before our enemies do, thus blocking access and landing of enemies.
Even in the event of an invasion, the Amphibious Rapid Deployment Brigade with amphibious capabilities will be mobilized. Capture the island by securing the coastline and engage in combat on land. Given today's persistent gray zone situations, attacks by enemies may not necessarily begin with incursions into territorial airspace and waters. Being a highly urbanized country, Japan faces the threat of sudden attacks breaking out close to home. The JGSDF will respond quickly to the serious threat of attacks by small teams of guerrillas, special forces, or armed agents among others. A system of gathering information will be established through coordination with the police. Units will be deployed to ensure the protection of cities and critical facilities such as nuclear power plants. In the event of an invasion already taking place, our forces will search for and destroy the guerrillas or special forces. To deal with such diverse situations involving guerrillas and special forces, a certain type of vehicle is being dispatched throughout the country. It is the domestically produced Type 16 Mobile Combat Vehicle. Unlike conventional tanks, it runs on wheels, greatly boosting its mobility in urban areas. Armed with a 105mm gun, it's capable of destroying enemy armored fighting vehicles. NBC poses the greatest threat in gray zone situations. To deal with nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons, the JGSDF has Japan's only units dedicated to handling them. They are the Central Nuclear Biological Chemical Weapon Defense Unit and Chemical Unit of the Chemical Corps. They can work on the front lines in the event of indiscriminate mass murder or extensive regional contamination to measure contamination levels, carry out decontamination, and rescue victims. Efforts are being made to further strengthen our forces to prepare for future battles with terrorists and guerrillas. Our daily lives are threatened not only by other nations and people. Nature can also pose a major threat at times. The JGSDF has always engaged in operations to save human lives in response to major disasters.
ensure the quick implementing of disaster relief operations, the JGSDF has units on standby 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. The initial response unit, known as Fast Force, has 3,900 personnel, around 1,100 vehicles, and around 40 aircraft on standby throughout Japan. Unlike the Maritime Self-Defense Force and Air Self-Defense Force, the Ground Self-Defense Force has no units dedicated to rescue operations. This is because the immediate response, assessment and execution capabilities of the JGSDF also allow them to deal with disaster relief activities. They engage in repeated training so that they will be able to respond any time. In modern times, it has become difficult for a single country to ensure its own security. And bilateral and multilateral cooperation has become more important than ever. The Japan-US security arrangements in particular are indispensable to the peace and stability of the Asia-Pacific region. The JGSDF has been engaging in joint training and exercises every year with the U.S. Army and U.S. Marine Corps for over half a century. Besides the U.S., the JGSDF has been engaging in joint training with the armies of various other countries, including the U.K., France, India, and Australia, as well as actively taking part in multilateral training. Okay, that's fine. Furthermore, personnel have been dispatched to various countries to provide capacity building assistance in improving the global security environment. To ensure peace and stability in the international community, the JGSDF has continued engaging in a variety of international peace cooperation activities for over 25 years, centered on peacekeeping operations, otherwise known as PKO.
Relying on experience in dealing with frequent natural disasters in Japan, the JGSDF engages in international disaster relief operations overseas. The JGSDF has dispatched personnel to provide medical care, transport goods, supply water, restore infrastructure and so on, winning high appraisal from various countries. Regardless of the quality of defense equipment or tactics deployed, what matters most is that people make full use of them. That is why the JGSDF invests greatest effort into the fostering of human resources. The JGSDF offers a variety of occupations people can choose from according to their capabilities, allowing them to receive highly specialized education. They can also acquire numerous practical skills through daily training. However, this type of education is not limited to the traditional method of senior personnel supervising junior members. The educational policies and content themselves are revised every day through constant evolution. To adapt to the increasingly intense security environment, the Training Evaluation Research and Development Command was established in 2018. TURCOM is at the forefront of JGSDF education and training engages in research, education and training in new methods of fighting. あの、厳しい状況の中でも耐えるようなその状況判断力であるとか精神力の馬力のあるようなあの学生を育てたいと思ってます。the JGSDF is one of the most outstanding organizations in Japan for fostering human resources that is highly systemized and will continue improving with the times. With the expansion of new domains, persistent gray zone situations, hybrid warfare, and the development of new weapons, the security environment will continue to change dramatically. The JGSDF will prepare for all kinds of situations and continue its evolution with flexibility and resiliency. All in order to contribute to peace and stability in Japan and throughout the world.